Thank you for tuning in to Growing Tech Fast, the condensed all 3D podcast in which conversations about growing tech startups are had with those who have grown them. Today, I am joined by Hayden Brink, CFO of Almond Finance, international fund transfer network, an open and transparent platform enabling individuals to share and access funds across borders. Uh, Hayden, thank you so much for joining us. Um, before we jump into who Almond are, um, I'd love to start with you. Uh, if you can give the audience a, the, the, the quick elevator pitch on who Hayden is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you uh, so much for having me, Rosie. Uh, like you said, I'm Hayden Brink. I'm the CFO of Almond Fintech. Uh, I also run a small uh, consulting firm uh, that mostly does financial consulting. I uh, started my career uh, doing uh, buy side or excuse me, sell side M&A for a small boutique bank out here in uh, Denver, Colorado, uh, and it pretty much been finance uh, since college. So I went to the University of Denver. I graduated with BSBA in, in finance, but that's me in a nutshell. I, I've been with Almond for uh, almost two and a half years now. And tell me a bit about where Almond is right now. Has it set the scene for, for the current company position? Yeah, so Almond uh, is making some pretty good traction. We uh, raised our seed round in uh, November of 2021 and have since then have hired a bunch of folks. So I was the fourth employee of the company. Uh, and now I think we're at 19. We just hired a, a new business development uh, person for Latin America and an additional software developer. Um, so we're making really uh, exciting progress and our team continues to grow, which is always a, a sign that uh, hopefully we're doing something right. Yeah, definitely. Um, so fourth employee, you're now at 19. What What's the day-to-day -day like at a company of that size? Yeah, so it's it's always uh, changing and it's uh, it's fast paced. I think there's a lot of uh, roles and responsibilities. You know, when I started as fourth employee and as kind of the, the finance guy, you know, I was doing some compliance work. Right. And so, you know, that was, uh, you know, something that was very new to me. Uh, now we've added a, a, a chief compliance officer. So I do less of that. And, you know, now I'm doing a little bit more HR than probably the typical uh, uh, finance uh, CFO would do. Um, but I think it's just always ever changing. I think everybody at the company uh, contributes in a lot of different areas, which I, I like compared to, you know, maybe a, a larger company where you've got your defined role. So um, we've got a really talented team, a bunch of folks from MIT and, and Harvard. Uh, the founders were met in grad school there. So, um, you know, yeah, the day-to-day, -day, it's hard to nail down exactly uh, what I do day-to-day -day outside of QuickBooks. I'm always in QuickBooks and uh, um, paying bills. Um, but outside of that, I think what gets me most excited is uh, working with the the rest of the team on strategy um, and, and the like. Yeah. And um, what made you join as employee number four? Yeah, so uh, I met Adam uh, and Eunice, who are the co-founders, uh, back in July of 2020, and they had a, a really you know, mission driven, uh, organization or, or vision. Right. And, and I really resonated to that, you know, the initial focus of Almond was to facilitate microfinance loans in Myanmar. Now, unfortunately we had to pivot because there was a coup in, in, in Burma, Myanmar, but, um, you know, I, I, I really, it really resonated to me, uh, that helping people in uh, lower income countries, uh, gain more financial inclusion. You know, I know just from being a finance person, how much, you know, having just a credit card that my mom started, uh, when I was younger, really helped my credit score ability to buy a house at, at yeah. uh, some point. Um, and so, you know, the fact that, uh, lower income folks and people in those countries don't have that access, um, and that Adam, uh, in particular was really focused on improving financial inclusion in those areas. You know, that's why I wanted to join with them. Um, you know, also wanted to be a part of a fintech as, you know, maybe yeah. everybody uh, our age does. <laughs> yeah. And what, so I guess that kind of gives an insight into why why the guys started the, the company. Can you explain in a, a bit more detail what actually Almond does and, and, and who they're helping? Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned uh, uh, microfinance loans in Myanmar, but we had to pivot away from that um, for the coup, obviously. And so now we're focused on international uh, transfer uh, payments or remittances. Um, and really the goal is to help folks who are receiving from, you know, their relatives that may have migrated to the U.S. or, or moved to a different part of the world uh, and actually are maybe not the breadwinner, but have more uh, access to financial resources and, and higher paying jobs so they can send money back and support uh, those folks. Uh, we've also got a credit product, which is helping uh, use psychometrics uh, to analyze folks who were previously deemed as uncreditworthy. Um, 
but hopefully through different means of, of our quote unquote credit score, uh, help them get uh, loans as well. So really the end goal of Almond is to help folks who, you know, haven't had uh, the diversity of products that, you know, we have in the States or that you have in the UK, uh, really mm -hmm. gain more access to financial inclusion, uh, primarily our transfer product. You know, it, it's really expensive to send money across borders. And if you're a low income individual who's getting a hundred bucks a month, um, and 7% of that goes to, you know, one of our competitors, just because that's the only way to get money there. Um, that's several days worth of, of food and, and, you know, pros prosperity or living expenses. So, um, mm. you know, really our end goal is to save the end user in low income areas uh, money. So, uh, I mean, to me, it's, it, when you think about this, this is a problem. Um, it seems crazy that those of us who do have the the benefit of having all, all of this access to the different parts of I guess the fintech world um like for me to send money to someone whether it's a friend or a member of my family it it's instant and it doesn't cost me anything um but when I take it through if somebody is is working let's say in the U.S. and they want to send money back home um I imagine they they send a proportion of of their salary that they get back home um and let's just say it's around like two two hundred dollars as an example um what outside of almond what is currently on offer for somebody who wants to send that 200 bucks home yeah there there's a lot of options um you know without uh, maybe naming all the names you know i think there's a bunch of different uh startups that or not maybe more established players uh that you can sign up as an app um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and send money directly from that app, from your bank account to the end user. Now that also requires the end user to have a bank account that takes money from, uh, whatever that app is. You can also send it through, you know, more traditional means like Western union, which is very expensive uh, and then traditional bank transfers. Like if you just wanted mm -hmm. a wire transfer, which I think everybody knows is, is too expensive. Um, yeah. so there, there's a lot of different ways. I think, uh, the cost and speed varies dramatically amongst all of those options and none of them are that cheap and none of them are that fast in, in mm. many respects. So, so that's what Almond is trying to do um, using our uh, settlement model. And so what what proportion or, or again using that example of 200 bucks if someone was to send that through Almond what's the what's the difference how much money are they saving? Yeah so I think uh, it all it depends on what they're using right so I think it could range anywhere from you know 1% to 25% if you sent a, a bank wire with Almond, our cost transfer consistently comes in, you know, anywhere from as low as 10 basis points or 0.1% uh, to, to 60 basis points, or 0.6%. So our cost is is mm. much lower than uh, all of our competitors. Um, and it's because we're uh, transferring using a, a blockchain network. Yeah. And so tell me a bit about that, because I'm sure a lot of people's ears have, have pricked up. Um, and both from a, like, hey, how, how are they using blockchain here but also what difference does that make to the end user because if they're in these l lower income countries how do they have access to to that type of finance yeah so so i think that's the one of the most exciting things about what we're building at almond is the end user doesn't necessarily have to have any blockchain you know wallet mm -hmm. or exchange account um they just have to have a bank account and so we set up our uh, our financial institution partners with our exchange partners and make the transfers on the blockchain uh, exchange or exchange, as opposed to, you know, the end user having to have a Coinbase account or a Bitcoin yeah. account in Thailand. And, you know, I think that's where, you know, really we're trying to merge uh, all the benefits of DeFi and blockchain with traditional financial institutions, because to your point, you know, if, if most people in low income countries have hesitancy to have bank accounts. If they have a bank account at all, it's going to be a much harder uh, sell to go, hey, also, hey, get this cryptocurrency wallet and hold Bitcoin, right? Um, mm. you know, and, and Bitcoin is just an example of, you know, we're crypto agnostic. Uh, we've seen that stable coins consistently, uh, like USDC, uh, consistently provide the lowest 
uh, cost to transfer. But I guess I would I would say, you know, that's that's really the benefit of Almond and what we're building is you as the end user or, or you know, this uh, person in a low income country as the end user doesn't have to have a cryptocurrency account in any shape or form. They never touch it. You know, that's a big mm. barrier in the U.S. right now uh, is that, you know, they, uh, financial institutions and customers are not supposed to touch um, cryptocurrency. Right. And so, you know, in our model, they do not. So, you know, it mm-hmm. works but on both ends, but both on more developed countries that have stricter regulations around cryptocurrency in their end user. And then also, you know, the end users in low income countries don't ever really no one in our process. The end user never really sees cryptocurrency. No, it never yeah. does. I shouldn't say really it never does. Yeah. So what's the point of using the blockchain? Can you elaborate a bit on that and explain for somebody maybe who isn't clued up completely in that area? What What's the benefit of? using the blockchain here yeah so i think in in many respects like the fastest way to send money and and the cheapest is just through the like a coinbase wallet to a coinbase wallet right um and so i think the the downside of that is that requires both uh, parties to have a coinbase wallet which you know i you know my wife doesn't have a coinbase wallet so one out of two people in my household doesn't have uh Mm -hmm. you know means to do that um so you know i think and when you do multiply that by the billions of people in the world i think that percentage even gets larger of of people who don't have it um so you know i i think the the biggest the biggest benefit is you know it's just faster right i think that's one of the and and it's more transparent right you know not to get too wonky in the weeds of of international settlements but you know some some settlements can have like five or six different institutions clearing houses and the transaction you know is 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 debiting and crediting at five different levels whereas a, a blockchain transaction is just the one transaction right so you see you know where it went and, and where it came from and that's just one posted transaction and so in many mm. respects it's a lot more transparent than the existing uh, network which is why it's cheaper quite frankly right um so, you know, that that's really why uh, the blockchain is, you know, why we're we're implementing it in more of a traditional means is because, you know, it, it's truly is faster, more transparent and cheaper in, in most cases just to send blockchain to blockchain uh, or, or excuse me, like wallet to wallet or exchange to exchange. And so that's why Almond is working on, you know, kind of bringing the traditional financial institution into that and getting the benefits of that. Yeah. So yeah, I think this is fantastic. It's it it's helping what is actually a, a group or a, a collective of people who are really in need of this. Because to think that somebody works works really hard uh, and wants to send two hundred bucks home and then has to give give anything up of that away, um, it, it is tough to tough to swollow, Especially when some of that is is uh, or a large amount of that is profit. Um, so I think what you're doing is brilliant. I love the mission. Um, I love the sound of the product. I can imagine if it was really, really easy, everyone will be doing it. Um, so can you tell me a bit about how, how it's been, I, I I can imagine there aren't just like the technical difficulties of adding the blockchain as an element of this product, but also getting this through some financial institutions, some of the, your partners and things like that. It's, it's got to have taken a bit of a bit of legwork. So can you tell me a bit about that journey? Yeah, so I, I'd say the technical part, uh, at least from my finance view, seems to be the easier part. We've got a, a great technical team um, and developers who have, you know, built a, a great suite of APIs. Uh, but to your point, the partnerships is the hardest. Like, especially here in the U.S., you know, there's uh, the regular... Uh, from my understanding, you know, regulatory bodies in the U.S. will let things happen and then come down with uh, rulings later and then say, hey, you violated this ruling, even though it's a year, you know, past when, yeah. <laughs> you know, we uh, it started. So there's a lot of hesitancy, especially in the U.S. Uh, to adopt this. I think, you know, uh, FedNow, uh, which is uh, uh, instant payments, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, just came out with, you know, things like that. Uh, and, and, you know, just the more adoption and more consciousness of the blockchain and, and, and its ability, mm. I think, helps. But, you know, that's always something we have uh, uh, conversations with our partners. And we've, you know, been told many times no uh, by uh, financial institution partners, not because they didn't like the idea and not because they didn't think that what we were doing could work. 
but because they were too worried about what the regulatory bodies could say. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've navigated that. I think the U.S. has been definitely the hardest market uh, for us to break into, which, you know, is kind of strange because you think, you know, technology company, MIT guys, you know, uh, this, this should be easy to get uh, partners. But I think, uh, you know, the way that the regulatory bodies are set up, uh, you know, kind of prevents institutions from wanting to be a first mover uh you know in southeast asia it's been you know a, a lot different right uh southeast asia is much more uh blockchain and, and digital asset friendly in many respects um they want to mm -hmm. in, increase commerce and i think in, a lot of that is because you know all those countries are you know very close like our states are but you don't have to be worried about sending you know states and, and exchange rates when you send money from colorado to kansas or colorado to, to massachusetts but you do if you're sending money from malaysia to thailand right even though they're right yeah. next to each other um so i think there's been a lot more openness we've got partners in three uh, countries there now um and and are working on a fourth in singapore um and so i think we'll have a corridor set up in Southeast Asia. And when I say that, you know, uh, uh, two countries that uh, settle via our settlement model on the blockchain mm -hmm. by the end of the year. Um, the U.S., I think that's anybody's guess, though, right? And so I think, <laughs> you know, it, it just depends, right? Um, you yeah. know, all, all places are different. We've had a lot of uh, uh, recent success uh, in uh, Latin America. We won the uh, Bank of Santander Blockchain and Beyond Challenge. Um, because there's a lot more appetite in in South mm. America, frankly, than there is in North America uh, for a product like this. So, you know, I, I guess that's a long winded way of saying, you know, it just varies on who we're talking to. There are some financial institutions yeah. who are very tech forward, very interested in, and want to save money on, on remittances. And there are others who, even if they could save money on remittances, are too worried about uh, regulatory bodies. Mm especially regarding blockchain cryptocurrencies uh, to even want to, you know, put a pilot out there. So. Yeah. Well, to go from four to 13, uh, 19 people, sorry, that, you know, you, you must have made a few good partnerships uh, and I'm sure they are going to continue in, in the months to come. Um, something I'd like to go into it, because uh, for people listening, this will sound like a fantastic mission, a fantastic problem to be working towards whether they're an engineer on one of your teams or whether they're in another part of the business um what what's it like joining a company like almond what what would people have in store yeah you know i think it's it's a very uh, fun and fast-paced environment i think uh you know the team is is uh very much like a family you know and maybe I, I say that from somebody who's been there for two and a half years so it's a lot easier for me to say that from somebody that maybe started yesterday but i do think you know genuinely the the founders really care about uh not only improving the company uh through hires but improving uh every individual's uh quote unquote mm -hmm. lot in life and, and career path you know i think they're very focused on on making sure that people um you know not only are are able to thrive at Almond, but also, you know, if they ever left Almond, they'd be able to thrive in their next job. And I think, uh, you know, that's refreshing. You know, I've worked at a lot of companies in, in my uh, uh, career and, and most of them are only care about the company. Um, and, you know, I think with Almond, you know, it's, it's a little bit different where they genuinely care about you as a, as a person and, and your career. Mm. Um, you know, with that said, I, I think, you know, the, the turnover rate at the company is almost zero, right? We've had a couple interns come and go, but, you know, in terms of positions that we've hired, um, you know, nobody's left, right? Like any, any full-time uh, people that we've hired, and, you know, Grant, we're only a three-year-old company, but, um, you know, I think that speaks to, uh, you know, how the founders are and how they yeah. treat you and how they care about more than just, you know, the end, end results of the business, but they also really care about the the individual person. And so, you know, that's my favorite thing about, you know, Almond just on a personal level and, and working with uh, the, the team. Um, but we're certainly a family, a fast paced environment. And I think um, ideas are, are always welcome. And a lot of people have ideas and we run with them. Right. So it's, you know, it's not, there's, there's no rigid way of doing things. I think that's the maybe the most exciting part about being at a startup period mm -hmm. um, is, you know, you can have a much bigger impact on the overall company and where it's going uh than you know if you work if you got a job at IBM <laughs> yeah yeah definitely I think it sounds it sounds great it sounds a little bit like uh what it's like to work at all 3d actually um it's a nice it's a nice environment when you can feel that the whole way through the business and it's not just on your immediate team it comes from from the founders too so what's next on the cards where are if we did a podcast this time next year where are Almond going to be 
Well, <laughs> hopefully world domination of the remittance yeah. <laughs> markets. Um, but no, uh, you know, I think in a year from now, I think we'll have, you know, uh, some really live and exciting corridors. And again, when I say that money transferring on our, on our blockchain mm -hmm. settlement model between two countries. So, you know, hopefully we have, you know, at least five or six by then, but hopefully bordering on 10, 20 uh, range, um, you know, and as with all startups, hopefully we'll have raised, you know, either a, a extension to our seed round or a, a series A round by this time next year um, mm -hmm. to continue to to go and, and try and accomplish what we're trying to do. I think uh, the biggest thing to get that is the corridors and transferring money. So, you know, I'd hope by this time next year, we have a significant amount of uh, dollars that have been transferred between through our, our uh, settlement model, because I think once we're able to prove what we're doing is very cost effective and fast and transparent. I think partners will come, um, you know, and we'll build our network. So, yeah. uh, you know, in, in short, hopefully we're, we're sending a lot of money back and forth by this time next year. Good, good. Okay. Well, look, I think this has been brilliant. I'd love to do that in a year's time and see where you are and see, uh, see who's, who's left on the list of countries to tick off. Um, but if I always ask this at the end, um, if the audience only takes one thing from the podcast, what would you like them to take away? That's a great question. Um, I would <laughs> say, you know, overall, the remittance market is is very expensive. And, you know, blockchain technology, uh, you know, one of the most practical use cases for it is sending and receiving funds, um, you know, and there's a lot of barriers to doing that just in your traditional uh, you know, sending Bitcoin because people don't mm -hmm. hold Bitcoin. Um, but what Almond's trying to do is really bring traditional financial institutions with those benefits that blockchain provides. And I think that's a really exciting um, space to be in. And uh, the, what we're doing as a company is is just very exciting and, and very practical. And, you know, once it's up and running, you know, should have a big impact on the way money is moved. Amazing. Well, Hayden, thank you so much. This has been great. Uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Rosie.